what's up katie vaz and welcome back to the channel in this video i'm going to be showing you how to make your own bias binding tape using whatever fabric of your choice i'm going to be creating four different sizes using four different materials in different colors and textures i'm going to be working with a bias tape maker set this set comes with four different sort of like sizes that you can use to create these sizes of bias tape and it also comes with a bias footer as well which you can use to make you know really skinny straps or ropes that you can incorporate into your garment or into your design so if you'd like to see how i go about making this bias tape make sure to keep on watching This is the kit I'm going to be working with today and I got this because I wanted to make really skinny shoulder straps and I just wanted it to come out really nice and professional. I got this off of Amazon for about £12 which is roughly 5800 Naira or $15. And I hope they can ship international. I'm going to link it down below for anyone who wants to check them out. This is what the kit comes with. It comes with four different sizes of bias tape maker. It also comes with an instruction manual which tells you how to cut your material. The different sizes of bias tape you need to cut for the different makers that it comes with. It also comes with a box of pins. It also comes with four plastic pegs in case you want to sort of peg down your bias tape. It comes comes with a bias binding footer and a quilting all as well. Before we get into the tutorial, I just wanted to quickly share with you guys, I'm going to be having my second virtual workshop online and this is going to be hosted via Zoom. It is going to be for a kimono and I'm excited to share that there are a total of 10 spots available for this class. Link in the description box for anyone who wants to join us on the 9th of August from 3 to 6 p.m. GMT. I'm actually really excited for this one. But back to the tutorial, I have my fabrics here. I got four different fabrics. I got some Ankara prints, some nice satin, and some very lightweight cotton. I also have my set square, fabric scissors, a chalk, as well as tape measure in case I need to take down any measurements. I also kept handy by my side the instruction manual because I kept going back and forth to be sure that I got the dimensions of the material that was meant to cut correct. In this video, I'm going to work my way through the four makers and starting off with the biggest one, which is in blue here. I'm going to be cutting a fabric strip that measures 1.5 inches or four centimeters roughly. So to cut on a bias, you literally have to cut 45 degrees from the selvage. And that's why I grabbed this set square because you can just align one edge of the set square with the selvage of the fabric. The selvage is the edge that usually has like the branding and that has that white strip and you sort of cut 45 degrees from there and i'm just going in here to double check that i have my measurement for this strip correct so i'm just going in here to draw in another line so i get a width of a four centimeter across and i'm going to be cutting out this diagonal strip like so making my way from the beginning to the end until i have a nice piece of material that i can work with so for the first one i'm going to grab it and pass it through the open end of the bias tape maker like so this is the point i realized that the all or the pointed object with the pointed edge actually came in very handy because you could pull the material through the tiny slit on top using the sharp end of the all or the pointed object so i'm going to take this in my machine and i'm going to be ironing it flat like so and on the instruction it said to actually pin down this particular end so you just need to pull the bias tape maker and you just press as you go along so you gradually just pull and then you press i'm using some steam as well so i don't burn my material at any point so i'm just pulling slowly and pressing making my way to the end of this particular bias tape so with that first one you would end up with a bias tape that measures roughly 0.9 or 1 inch this is like the biggest size of bias tape that you can make from this kit 
and you just sort of get skinnier and skinnier as you make your way across the second one you would need to cut a strip that measures 1.4 inches or 3.5 centimeters width and you need to cut it diagonally as well so the other way you can cut a longer piece of material is to fold the fabric in half like this so you fold it in such a way that you get a diagonal fold on this side of your material make sure everything is nice and straight because if you fold this in a way that is not really straight you would have a curved end on the folded side now i'm just going to grab my set square and aligning one edge to the selvage of the fabric i am drawing a diagonal line that goes across like so and then i'm going to both go back in and draw another line so i have an even width of 3.5 centimeters or 1.4 inches believe me those extra milli inches and milli centimeters goes a long way in sort of like determining how much in the bias folds when you press it down so i'm just cutting out this particular piece like so and when i open up the fold i would end up with a longer strip of bias tape so i'm going to grab the second bias maker which is this one colored in red and i'm going to pass the material through this open or wider end and using this object called the all i'm going to pass it through moving it across through with the slit on that sort of like top open end so i'm going to take this my ironing board and i'm going to press it flat starting off at the beginning and then add a pin just to hold down the tape while i press the rest of the piece the pin just prevents it from moving around the ironing board and it just gives you the freedom to have both hands one hand pulling this bias tape maker on the other hand sort of like moving your iron as you go along so just take your time and if you have to like readjust the material so you have an even fold on both ends you have the freedom to do so as well so for the second one you should end up with a bias tape that measures roughly 0.75 inches and if you sort of fold this in half it even becomes skinnier so i'm going to work my way into the third bias tape maker which you would need to cut one inch wide or three centimeters wide fabric for and for this one i decided to try a slightly slipperier material so you have an idea of how it behaves so i'm going here to draw my diagonal line using chalk i just find that doing this just made cutting a lot easier you can do the folding method if that's what you prefer but using sort of like the graded edges of this my set square i'm just going to draw my second line across so i have an even width of three centimeters or one inch so i'm going to go back in and cut along the chalk line so i have my piece of material ready to pass through the bias tape maker and then to iron flat so I'm going to grab the number three maker, which is this one colored in yellow, and I'm going to pass it through the wider end. And because this material is slippery, I found it a lot easier to make its way through across. And then I'm just going to pull it out the other end and take it to my ironing board to iron it nice and flat. So I'm going to start from one end like we've done with the previous two, and then I'm just going to iron a little bit and grab my pin pass that pin through across and then sort of like pull gradually and iron as we go along for this particular one i found that there was not any space sort of left in the middle of the bias tape when i was done ironing it so just keep that in mind if you want to cut a slightly skinnier strip that you would press to make this size of bias you should end up with a bias tape that measures roughly half an inch once you sort of like press both sides flat and that's sort of the number three one for the fourth and final one which is like super skinny you would need to cut a fabric diagonally that measures two centimeters or 0 0.8 inches in width and i'm working with this really fine cotton fabric that has uh, some lines going across so like we've done with the previous three i'm just making it sort of go through and because this one was so skinny oh my god it was such a struggle to make it come out of the other end so if you're struggling as well just know that it's a very tiny opening so you might need to poke and prod to make it make its way all the way across to the side that actually you know folds it in a way to create the bias tape so i'm going to take this in my iron and we're going to be ironing this down like we've done with the others starting with a small piece at the beginning and then adding your pin to sort of hold that beginning point down and then you have both hands free to one pull 
the bias tape maker and then your second hand to iron across as you make your way to the end of this particular one which happens to be the slimmest bias tape that this kit makes so if you want to make a shoulder strap with this one just keep in mind that stitching this might be a little bit tricky but possible to do so once you've pressed it, you should end up with a bias tape that measures roughly 0 0.25 to 0 0.3 inches in terms of width. And because this kit came with a bias binding footer, which I've been wanting for the longest time, we're actually going to be demoing that as well in this video. So I'm just going to be taking this to my machine and you can actually adjust the distance of that footer back and forth using the top wheel like so and then you can also adjust the tunnel for the bias tape on that on that area using this side wheel you can make it nice and skinny you can make it wider which i think is really really clever so i'm going to take this to my machine and i'm going to be swapping out my normal footer for this bias binding footer So I'm going to place in the footer like so and it's just relatively very straightforward to install into the machine and then I'm going to be working with the widest bias tape that we made so it's a little bit clearer and the way this thing works is you are meant to pass the bias tape through like so that you have one side of the fold on top and the other side of the fold at the bottom so it literally just folds itself and then you adjust the width of the tunnel so it's nice and secure around the bias tape and it just holds it in place and you literally just sew as you sew remember to sort of like control the material but in terms of like the folding and the stitching I'm actually very very impressed with the results so this is what it looks like It's relatively even from the beginning to the end there were a few parts that the bias tape tried to escape but generally I give this like a big pass for outcome and finish so the machine that I use is the Breda LS14 I have two videos on my channel about this machine how to set it up and like two years after review and I just wanted to say that the stitch I used is the stitch 11, which brings the needle to the left hand side of the footer, as you can see here. Uh, let's see if I can get this into focus. Yeah. So it's slightly to the left hand side. So that gets the edge of the bias tape as we're stitching down with the footer. But you have the freedom to adjust the width of this tunnel here. This particular tunnel using this wheel you can roll the wheel back and forth to move the width of that tunnel and then to shift this in and out you use this wheel there so that's that's it i think i'm going to get lots of use especially for doing like skinny straps i'm going to get lots of use out of this particular footer here and it was definitely worth the coin. Like the best tape maker is definitely, definitely worth the coin. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. It was definitely so much fun to film. It was very interesting to try out something new that I hadn't done before. And I know I'll definitely be using this kit in the future for like future projects when I need to make a skinny strap, when I need to make like a thin material that I don't know, I'll thread through holes, parts of garments and so on and so forth. But if you enjoyed this video, please give this video a thumbs up, comment down below if you've used this kit before, if it was any good or if it was just a waste of money for you. But I'd love to know your thoughts, suggestions and ideas in the comment section down below and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.